Welcome again to uh, Our Texas, the podcast, and uh, we're uh, fortunate to have uh, another guest, I think, who has something really interesting compared to what many other folks have been doing uh, with their degrees. His name is uh, Harry Kennedy, and he's the uh, CEO and founder of Hack uh, Electronics. And so um, it has a lot of phases to it. We'll get into it. How you doing, Harry? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Good, good, oh, yeah. good. Now, um, let us know a little bit about what Hack Electronic does. Uh, and, and and again, Hack is H-A-K. Yeah, so, so not the H-A-C-K. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so Hack is actually my initials, Harry Andrew Kennedy. Okay. And so Hack Electronics is the idea of, you know, how do we have students build the future of technology? Mm. So we do lessons and workshops based off science, technology, engineering, and math, so mm. the STEM but really focusing on students designing and creating things they see in their everyday life. So mm. example of that would be, you mm. know, if they have uh, their cell phone, like how can I figure out how to build this or something with, uh, you know, sports or music and something like that. Sure, sure. Well, um, uh, what got you started with the notion that students needed more help with STEM courses? Yeah, I think um, it's clear to see that we want and we need more diversity when it comes to technology and in spaces where, you know, understanding and uh, really understanding engineering is key. So that diversity problem has been, you know, apparent for a while. And so what I wanted to do was say, you know, with my experience of being an engineer and also recruiting mm -hmm. is that how can I really make sure that these students have hands-on experience mm -hmm. and actually understand and comprehend these subjects well before they go into those hard periods of college? Mm -hmm. um how did you, how did the idea come to you to to actually do this to to have a company to to assist students yeah i think um a big part of the main idea to assist students came from mm -hmm. you know wanting to help and wanting to provide a peek into what i do mm -hmm. so there is an organization that really said hey you're an engineer can you come speak to our kids and i had some free time so i wanted to show them you know more of a in-depth experience of what I do. so Not just give them a lecture? Exactly. Like okay. Give them something that they can actually take home with them. So okay. I said, hey, what happens if we can actually break down some of these concepts in a, a physical board mm. that they can actually touch, see, feel, mm. and take home with them? Mm. And providing that style of workshop, the students loved it. They were able to comprehend some of the actual topics and really talk about electricity or engineering in that field. So that was like that little aha moment saying that if I can have students really uh, resonating and really being excited about it when they're given physical objects, what would happen if they actually create them themselves? Mm. Uh, I hope you appreciate this. It, it doesn't seem like with the uh, youthfulness of your face <laughs> that those students would think that there was a big gap between your age and theirs. Yeah. Do you think that that was a plus? Definitely. I think um, you know it really showcases that one, students that look like them, so some minority students can see engineering as a career, but also someone that's so young could be in engineering as well, too. So it made them really say, okay, this is a possibility for me. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> before we uh, go into more of the uh, of Hack Electronics and what it does, um, how did you begin your uh, career? How did you get interested in electronics, yeah. in, in engineering? So for me, when I was young, you know, it was the beginning. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 what, you, what age is that? 14, 16, Relatively 18, speaking, you know, it's all relative. <laughs> so um, when I was, you know, young, it was basically the cusp of the Super Nintendo and starting to have some video games consoles. So you were 14 at the time? Yeah, more like six-ish. Six, -ish, six so. okay, yeah. okay, good, good. <laughs> is that dating myself, as they say? Well, you know, <laughs> it, it's giving the audience uh, more of a perspective of okay. how young this came to you, the uh, the interest in electronics. So. Yeah. And I think with that, you know, you have a lot of that imagination and a lot of mm -hmm. that creativity. Uh -huh. And so it's a mix of, you know, going outside, but also being able to play with some video games. Mm -hmm. And that really sparked, you know, my uh, imagination and also my curiosity when it came to something electronic thing. So from taking apart some of those old Kodak cameras <laughs> um, to seeing those broken TVs and, like, really getting a chance to see inside of it. Yeah. Those were, like, key things that, like, really resonated with me and stuck with me. 
And what really pushed me over the edge is saying, okay, this is engineering, mm-hmm. is that I had a high school teacher, um, you know, around 10th grade that really broke down, like, you know, here's some of the actual technical or some of the more advanced things you can do mm-hmm. with that interest and curiosity. So that was like one of the key things that really galvanized me saying, engineering is what I want to do. Okay. Now you're, you're from New York. However, yes. you didn't go to any of the New York colleges. What, why not? Why, why did you pick? Ohio State. Yeah, so um, partially was, you know, just trying to get new experiences, but... Um, get away from home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the code? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So that was definitely part of it, getting out of state, mm-hmm. and um, Ohio State really resonated with me, mm-hmm. and weird story is that I only knew about that, uh, the institution by, I was cleaning my room one day, mm-hmm. having a TV on. I don't really even watch college football, but mm-hmm. one of the, uh, the announcers talked about how a student had an agriculture uh, project and mm-hmm. talked about agricultural engineering. Mm-hmm. And so that stuck in the back of my mind as I was cleaning my room. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to the SAT time, you yes. have to take, you know, three or four um, uh, schools ascended to. Yes. That started off my, you know, might as well add Ohio State here. Okay. Uh, and they responded back to me, invited me to come visit. And then once I got on campus, I really fell in love with the campus and, you know, how they were really approaching it. So mm. all from just having my TV on while cleaning my room ended up being, you know, my university that really brought me through engineering and really set me up for success. Sure. And then uh, once you finished, uh, you uh, began work with uh, General Electric? So uh, I interned twice while I, during college. So okay. the way to sort of see, you know, what I wanted to do and, um, and getting a feel for once I actually graduate, what can my, you know, what are my options? Mm-hmm. So I interned once with General Electric uh, and then once with General Motors mm-hmm. and I actually ended up in Dallas, Texas through way of Texas Instruments. So a okay. couple of engineering companies. Mm-hmm. Um, what had you heard about Texas Instruments before you came to Texas? So... I was like a majority of people when, you know, hearing text instruments is, I love their calculators. <laughs> and so I quickly found out that, you know, they make so much more than that. Anything sure. that goes inside your TV, smartphone, okay. cell phones, anything electronic has a TI part into it. Right. And that just, you know, fascinated me with seeing, okay, the inner workings of how all these electrical systems are made. Okay. Okay. And so um, you worked uh, at, at Texas Instruments for a while, and then you said, well, let me do something different or let, let me see what I can do regarding this other itch about uh, informing students about uh, STEM subjects. Yeah, I think um, it was a little bit twofold because part of me was I wanted to find, you know, how do we have more students like me or how do we have more representation in general mm-hmm. in um, engineering? And so that really sparked it. But also I was noticing that um, – just more on a macro level that all the electronics were getting smaller and smaller, Mm -hmm. getting more consolidated, Mm -hmm. and students weren't really having that moment of breaking open their TVs or, like, the old camera and seeing, you know, that large capacitor inside that shocked them at times. Okay. Like, they weren't really getting these experiences. And Mm -hmm. so it began to sort of create a gap or, you know, harder for students to realize how these, you know, stereos, computers, cell phones, how they're actually made. And Mm so that's really what sparked, you know, a a passion for it and also a need for it. It's like, how do we really break down to these students what that middle space looks like between what they're learning in school mm. and what they buy off the shelves? Like, mm. how do we really break that middle ground down so they can really stay excited? Okay. Uh, just just one more thing about this uh, 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 lack of uh, folks in the pipeline. Um, did you notice anything? Uh, no. Do you recall anything from the time that you were in college to now the number of people going to college, number of uh, uh, people of color going to college, uh, interested in either of those elements of STEM, science, technology, engineering? Um, Did you see a, a lack of diversity in a, as a student body? I think there are still enough, you know, examples or enough people that have been interested in engineering that you will always see, you know, classes of students that are really focused on this and are really building towards that. Mm -hmm. But I think as a whole, there can always be more that we can do for that. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, So uh, talk about those summer camps. I think you have a summer camp for um, sports and technology. Then you have another one called the drone camp, then 3D printing and robotic camps. Uh, How does engineering help us with the first one, the sports yeah. and technology. 
So what I really wanted to do when I approached my summer and even my philosophy of hack electronics in general is that mm. I wanted to showcase that it's not, you know, a student doesn't have to choose between sports or a technology field. They don't have to choose between, you know, music or technology or mm. even like between fashion or technology. That mm. These all can be intertwined. And so my whole goal for this summer was to say, okay, how do we showcase that mm. technology is now infused in your everyday life? For example, the sports technology, um, I joke that, you know, I'm a little bit, I would say two inches too small for me in the NBA. <laughs> so I chose engineering as my sort of backup. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. I wanted to really recreate a lot of those experiences, whether it's like a, a vertical jump test, so jumping as high as you can in, in the air. Mm. Why not make a way for there's a row of lights that as you jump higher and higher, it can light up more lights. So that way your student that wants to play football, that wants to play basketball, can actually just go up, you know, jump. And they're excited because they want to try to reach higher and higher. Yes. Well, now let's break down what is actually making each of those lights light up. Okay. And we're talking about technology. Okay. And so from there, we have another activity where uh, we take what's called an accelerometer, basically something that can detect how fast somebody's moving. And we can strap it to any part of their body. And whereas they run a little obstacle course, we can showcase when they speed up, when they slow down in terms of numbers. So now okay. a student's not saying, oh, he's fast, he's slow. But he can actually say, hey, he accelerates or he decelerates. Okay. And now these students are okay, they're thinking differently and showcasing that it's not that hard to really learn these technology and these terminologies when it's actually something they care about. Okay. Um, give us a clue about the, the drone uh, camp that you have. Yeah, this is also what I'm really excited about because uh, part of, again, Hack Electronics and trying to really design things mm -hmm. is that we wanted to say, okay, how could we design a drone? And so it requires, you know, for us and with the students, we're taking apart some drones that we've bought and sort of seeing what are the components in there. There's some motors in there. There's some mm. little things that navigate. Mm. And for the end, the whole week, we're going to sort of work and see, okay, how do we actually build a drone? And through that process, we're going to understand some of the challenges. So why is weight a factor of it? Or why do you have four motors? Are they all doing the same thing? Mm -hmm. And then if a student that goes to this camp you know, they're not only just playing with a drone because they know how to use a joystick, but now they're actually understanding some of the dynamics of how it moves and why it moves. And so it's a way to go from, you know, just being a consumer of some of this technology yes. to actually understanding how it works and mastering it. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> what's the the uh, the age group that you are interested in for attending these uh, camps that you have? Definitely. So at this moment, we're really focusing on the 5 to 12 age range. Mm -hmm. And so that is really a great time where students are impressionable when it comes to choosing their career, but also starting to have, you know, some comprehension of their math classes and their science classes and get a feel for like, you know, the difficulty that may happen or if it comes easy to them or not. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be the main focus for our camps. As we get more interest when it comes to our high school students or even our younger ones, we're actually going to open up programming for that. So we have a whole um, innovation lab, which we can dive into more, that we're focused on hitting the full spectrum of students of all ages. But right now for our summer camps, we're focused on that 5 to 12 age range. Okay. Um, the, is, is the drone camp the, the first time this, this, uh, this year? Uh, so this will be the first time we've done the drone camp, but okay. we've, um, you know, we've been playing with drones and really okay. been having some fun with it uh -huh. to prepare. Um, uh, how many students could comfortably be a part of the camp? Yeah. So I think it's, um, a good segue to where this is going to be at because mm -hmm. we have what's called our innovation lab and this is on, um, 506 South Fitzhugh. Mm -hmm. So it's basically Fitzhugh and I 30, about 10 minutes from downtown Dallas. Sure. And our goal there is, you know, how do we enable students to build the future of technology? Mm -hmm. So in our drone camp, we can fit, you know, I would say at least 10 students comfortably. Okay. And in a way that they're able to work together in teams, but okay. also have some projects by themselves to uh -huh. really try to get together and again, build a drone from sure, scratch. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, just two of the things, and, and then we'll let you go. Um, one is you, you did some recruiting uh, years ago. Yeah. Um, uh, where did you recruit and um, what were some of the hooks that you tried to give those you were recruiting to come and work or either be in part of uh, engineering? Yeah, I think, um, so I recruited 
back at Ohio State, so you know, for TI, we'd always make uh, appearances on campus. So I was mm-hmm. able to recruit there, mm-hmm. and also through an organization called the National Society of Black Engineers, sure. which they have like you know regional and um, yeah, yeah. national yeah. conferences. Mm-hmm. And so when I recruited, it's um, some of the things I would use to really get students excited is really again showcasing the inner workings of what we do. Yeah, because when you actually are able to break something open and figure out, okay, that's capacitor, that's resistor, mm-hmm. and be able to repiece this together, mm-hmm. it becomes a challenge that is students become more hungry to solve. Mm-hmm. And so definitely showcasing and understanding how to actually uh, break down the inside of something mm-hmm. and how to uh, comprehend what's going on. Mm-hmm. But then also, I would always try to challenge the students, and even today, challenge students on something called proficiency. So how do you really understand and match their your area of expertise. Okay. And that becomes a real um, differentiator when I think of Hack Electronics too, because we want our students really breaking down and understanding, no, this is why this motor works. Here's what's inside of it. And if I were to you know, make a bigger motor, here are the challenges that would come along with it. So it becomes intuitive mm-hmm. based off our method of how we teach. Mm-hmm. And that's more, um, that's what's gonna take someone along and you know, farther when it comes to really becoming a master's of their craft. Uh, from time to time, there'll be talk shows and, and news articles that talk about the, the lack of students interested, in particular women, interested in the sciences and technology and engineering and, and math. Um, sometimes the the reason is that there's just a lack of interest. Yeah. Other times, uh, the, 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 some of the articles will talk about how um, it's beyond their um, their their capability, their mental acuity. What has been your experience about why there is a lack of, there's not enough uh, 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 women and uh, people of color in these areas, these these uh, subjects? Yeah, and I think um, this is a great question because our whole goal is to get more mm-hmm. students in engineering in general. So mm-hmm. that word proficiency, um, a synonym for that is competence. Mm-hmm. And so what we see is that when students are challenged to um, to solve a hard problem mm-hmm. and they might not know it, mm-hmm. they might shy away from it because, you know, they don't want to be embarrassed or mm-hmm. they don't want to, you know, under- they don't want to struggle through something and get it wrong. Okay. And so not only are we trying to build their competence, but mm-hmm. also their confidence. Okay. And so we, uh, we focus on having students, you know, repeat what they've done, reiterate that they've done it, because as they start getting these small levels of success, so whether it's, you know, connecting a wire to a battery or actually breaking open, you know, their cell phone correctly, then they start to develop that confidence mm-hmm. such that we can challenge them in order to build their competence. Okay. And so... If we are able to get to students and uh, let them know that it's okay to you know struggle to something, it's okay to work hard on something, mm-hmm. and be confident in that learning mm-hmm. style, mm-hmm. then we can really say, okay, now what are you interested in? You can go ahead and build. You know, you can go ahead and do whatever you want because you have that confidence of understanding what a struggle looks like okay. from a um, a technical and like a math or learning perspective. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, uh, first of all, I, I truly appreciate your time uh, you, being likewise. with us and, and letting other people know. Uh, again, you've been listening to uh, Harry Kennedy, who is um, uh, the uh, founder and uh, president of Hack Electronics. Now, give us the, the website in case folks want to uh, get on there and see when the camps are available. Yeah, definitely. So the website is www hakelectronics.com and so we're all on social media if you youtube hack electronics um again h-a-k-e-l-e-c-t-r-o-n-i-c-s um will pop up on your instagram your twitter your Mm -hmm. facebook or Mm -hmm. even a google search so Mm -hmm. um and we're in dallas doing workshops pretty much all of june and july and so you know we have week-long workshops but also you know on saturdays we have these uh day pop-ups so if you're not really what's a a day pop-up so we call them our stem saturdays and it's just a way for a student that may not be um really know if they're interested in stem yet or Mm -hmm. a parent just wants to see what's going on just to come in you know work with like-minded students and parents and really just have fun on a certain challenge so we've done things where we just sort of hooked up a motor to a, a a bottle and sort of made a car out of it 
we're doing things with 3D printing. And um, every Saturday, usually from 10 to noon, mm -hmm. we just come in and say, okay, you know, what do we want to build? You know, we have some different topics, but if students come in and say, okay, I have a project or I want to take this Xbox apart, we're going to help you do that and just sort of make it a more casual, a relaxed style of learning. Um, Harry Kennedy of uh, Hack Electronics, thanks so much, man. I, I sure hope that uh, more people will uh, take a view, but also ha have their kids uh, either uh, get to the camps or go online and, and uh, try to contact you that way too. Definitely. I think, um, you know, with technology is definitely the future. So we uh, talk about all these robots and stuff like sure, that. Sure. We have to treat our engineering or our STEM uh, learning examples like we do our sports. So okay. I'm excited to help make that happen. Hey, man, thanks so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Bet. Bye. Again, thanks for uh, you listening to uh, our Texas the podcast. Adios.